Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a 3G vertical up 3 8 plate groove weld with backing. And this is a really common uh, qualification test for structural welding. This is what's called a limited qualification test, which means that uh, it will qualify you for a limited thickness. So it will basically qualify you for two times this 3 8 thickness of plate. So that would be up to three quarter inch plate. And I usually recommend uh, doing this qualification test first uh, because it's less passes, it's a little easier uh, to do and takes a little bit less time. Kind of get your feet wet with getting qualified in structural. And then from there you can do the one inch qualification tests, which is, is basically the same test, just thicker material, takes a lot longer, a lot more passes, and that will qualify you for unlimited thickness. So I'm going to show you how to fit up the plate, how it's prepped, um, you know, how to do all your different uh, welding passes, and then uh, we'll do a bend test on the result and see how I did. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've prepped all my material and we have a 30 degree bevel on our plate and I've removed all the mill scale uh, about a half inch from the edge of the top of the bevel. I've re removed all the mill scale and dross from where it was cut with oxy fuel. And then I made sure if there's any dross or anything on the back side that I've cleaned that up with a grinder too because we need to make sure that this is gonna fit nice and tight to that backing bar. So we have a quarter inch uh, uh, piece of backing bar that we're gonna fit to this plate. And we wanna make sure that when we fit it up that there's not gonna be any gaps in there. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. Okay, so I've got all my pieces prepped. I've got both sides of my beveled plate and my backing bar. Uh, I've removed the mill scale. Now this isn't always uh, vital that we remove the mill scale when we're welding with stick. Uh, because it does a pretty good job of blasting through the, uh, the mill scale. But um, for a certification test, I always want to remove the mill scale just to you know, give us the best possible uh, welding scenario here. So um, what I like to do is I like to use two pieces of uh, material that are the same thickness as the backing bar so that everything's uh, nicely aligned um, and so that everything fits up nicely. And I may need to adjust this backing bar, um, you know, on an anvil or just with some material to get it to flatten out. So if there's a bow in the backing bar, I need to turn it over and hit that high spot with the hammer to get it to flatten out so that this plate fits nice and snug. We don't want any gaps in there because that can give you problems uh, with fusion and stuff like that to that backing bar. Because when we're done, we want this backing bar and these two pieces of plate to be all be one piece of material. We, we want full fusion. Okay, so I'm gonna fit this up with a quarter inch uh, root opening there. So I just take a piece of quarter inch material and I use that to space my root opening. And then I'm going to take a look in here and I'm going to make sure that this is all lined up and that I don't have any gaps in here. And then I like to go ahead and clamp this material so that it doesn't move around. Uh, you don't need to clamp it. You can tack it as long as it fits nice and tight, but I just like to clamp it down so that if I accidentally bump something, you know, I don't end up with a root opening that's off. Okay. So I'm going to clamp both sides so that I can do my tacking. And my root opening looks nice and even on both sides, quarter inch all the way down. And if I look in here on both sides, I don't see any gaps anywhere in my root opening. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now I can go ahead and I can put some small tacks on each side to hold this together so that I can flip it over and put some tacks on the back side. All right, so now I've got my small tacks on this side, on either side of the bevel to the backing bar. And I just want to take one last little look and inspection and make sure that I don't have any big gaps or any mismatch or anything in here. So everything looks pretty good. So now I'm going to put one inch tack welds on both sides of the backing bar in three places. So one in the center and one on each end. 
And that'll just help pull this whole backing bar and, and plate together with the shrinkage forces of those tack welds. And that's what we want. And that will also help to keep this plate from uh, pulling up as we weld it, um, keep the distortion in check. Okay, so we're gonna throw those tack welds on now. All right, so now we're all tacked up and we have it in the 3G position for vertical up. We're gonna be using 7018 electrode, which is the common uh, low hydrogen electrode that is used in structural. And we wanna make sure that we have this plate position to where it's going to be comfortable throughout, uh, throughout welding, the progression of the weld, right? So we're going to use a slight push angle on our electrode, so about 20 degrees from 90 pushing the electrode up. So we want to make sure that we can start at the bottom of the joint here uh, with about a one inch run in on the backing bar going into the actual joint. That way on this first weld, uh, we get you know a little bit of preheat to the backing bar and the uh, beveled material before we actually get into the plate, the beveled plate itself. So we want to make sure that we you know, have this plate position to where we have access to the bottom here about an inch out and we can still maintain that 20 degree push angle as we go up. Another thing that I've done that I like to do is I like to mark the halfway point of the plate here with the scribe. And that way, as I'm welding, when I get up uh, to the halfway point, if I'm going to stop and get a new electrode, I stop in the middle there and I have all my starts and stops just in the center. And the reason for that is, is that we never want to have starts and stops in an area where we're going to be doing a bend test because we may have lack of fusion there. So that way, if I stop in the middle, both of my bend tests are going to be in the area here of, of the plate, here and here for my root and face uh, bend test. So I wanna make sure that I'm stopping in the center if I'm going to stop at all. And I tend to do that on these certification tests. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get down to where the, the electrode's getting shorter. Instead of getting you know three quarters of the way through the plate and stopping right in that bend test, I'll just stop in the middle every time and tie it in. And uh, I've done pretty well in the past doing that. So, um, and the reason I use a scribe is because under the hood, uh, it can be hard to see soapstone marks or something like that. So if I do a scribe as I'm welding, I tend to see that reflection from the, the arc light and I can tell where I'm at each time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this root in and I'm gonna have about an inch run into the plate and an inch run out. And that's really important because that means that each time that I put a, a new layer in, I'm going to be building up the weld coming in and out. And if you were to cut this backing bar um, off at the end, you know, flush with the end of the plate, you wouldn't have any areas where that weld is running out and you're, you know, you're leaving edges of the, of the um, joint exposed. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and throw the root in. All right, so now I got my root pass in all the way up and I was just using that slight 20 degree push angle and I'm bringing my, my electrode over to each side using kind of like a Z-weave pattern. And, you know, as I, as I go up, I'm going to each side of that bevel where that knife edge meets the backing bar. And I'm just pushing in, keeping a very, very tight arc gap on each side and pausing long enough for it to fill up with the weld metal and then going to the other side. And I want to be really careful not to advance too much on each one of those sides of the weave because then I'll be leaving gaps in between. So it's just sort of a pause and press on each side as I let that flux burn away on the electrode and fill up so that I don't create any undercut. And um, the other thing that's important is, is that we want to clean the joint out on each pass very, very well. We don't want to leave any slag in there to where we have slag inclusions uh, in our joint when we go to do the bend test. So you can use a chipping hammer and a wire brush, but I, especially on a certification test like this and you know out in the field welding, um, I'm just going to use a braided wire wheel 
um, to clean out that joint on each pass really, really well. I'm gonna make sure that I'm you know, turning it to each side to get the, the edge of the toe of the weld and the bevel and just really clean that out really good because that's probably the biggest problem that we see uh, in these full penetration welds like this is slag inclusion. So we wanna make sure that we um, are cleaning it out and also just keeping our angles uh, you know, um, acceptable to where we don't s trap any slag underneath our weld. So uh, just keep that in mind. Another thing is, is that if you're on a certification test, you may not be able to do any grinding, but definitely if you're in a fabrication situation and there's any high spots that are going to uh, make it difficult for you to, um, you know, add each layer and have it be level, or if there's you know, any type of profile to your weld that kind of rolls over and leaves a crevice in there that's gonna be hard to penetrate with the next pass, you wanna go in there with the grinder and the, you know, the edge of a grinding wheel and you want to clean those areas out so that it's nice and smoothed for your next pass. And uh, that's really, really typical. Any high spots is to clean those up um, to make sure that, that you're you know, getting a good quality um, full penetration weld without any voids in there. So um, it, it really isn't true that a good welder doesn't need a grinder. Uh, grinder's your best friend in a lot of cases. So uh, just keep that in mind, all right? So now uh, I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes and then I'm gonna put in my next layer. All right, so now we have our fill passes in, and for this layer, I, after the root single pass, I've split into two. And so now we're going to have our cap pass, which will also be two um, separate beads uh, next to each other, stringer beads. And um, one thing I wanted to mention is that there's a little bit of a high spot in my tie-in for my start and stop. So, um, you know, if, if possible, you'd want to grind that down a little bit just to dress it up and uh, to, you know, have all of the weld be pretty much at the same height so that uh, when you're welding your cap pass, you don't have a high spot there. So on the cap pass, we have to be really, really careful to not leave any undercut on the surface uh, of, the, of the plate and also not to be over the maximum of an eighth of an inch. So AWS D1.1 says that the maximum reinforcement on this plate on a test like this would be an eighth of an inch above the base material. So we have to make sure that we don't underfill it in any area, meaning that the weld uh, will be underneath uh, the edge of the bevel. So it has to be at least flush with the surface in all areas to not be underfilled. And it can't be any more than an eighth of an inch high. So that's really important. So we wanna make sure that our stack up of weld layers is smooth and that um, you know, we're compensating for any low or high areas to make sure that it's fully filled, but that we're not fully over that eighth of an inch maximum height. Okay, so we have to be kind of careful. And if there are any areas like this that are, that are high that you'd like to grind down, if you're doing a certification test, you're gonna to have to ask the inspector or whoever's running that test, if you can grind those areas. And sometimes they won't let you grind. So, um, you know, but other times they'll, they'll totally let you grind, um, you know, in one area like that. They may not let you remove a whole weld if you just mess it up, but um, usually high spots like this, they will let you grind those down, but it's not always the case. So make sure you ask before you start grinding during a certification test. Um, but so I'm just gonna grind right here where my start and stop is tied in. I have a little bit of a, um, a high spot there. So I'm gonna uh, just dress that area. And then that way, when I weld over that, I'm not gonna have you know, a high area right in the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and try to tackle this cap pass. All 
All right, so I put in my stringer on the right side here, and I just wanted to talk about my technique on the cover pass, because it's really important not to leave any undercut on um, where the edge of your, uh, the toe of your weld meets the, the edge of the bevel here. So as I come over to this edge, I make sure that my arc spacing, the, the um, you know, distance between the end of the electrode and the base material and my, my weld pool is very, very short. I want to keep that short the whole time. So I'm advancing this in to keep it uh, nice and close. And as I come over, I just want to hesitate and let that fill up. If I go too fast, I'm in too much of a hurry and I don't have any pause on the edges, then I'm going to leave undercut there. And we're only allowed a 30 second is a maximum undercut um, on, on a plate like this. So we want to really make sure that we're tying in every little you know, inch of this, uh, of this plate on either side and make sure that we are doing that pause on each side to, to let it fill and then make sure that we aren't even leaving any undercut behind. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in my stringer on the other side, and now it's gonna be really important for me to make sure that I'm coming all the way over to one side and tying into the, the stringer that I just put in, and then coming all the way over to the other side and pausing on the edge of this, uh, on the edge of this bevel and doing the same thing to make sure that I'm tying in on that side and that I don't leave any gaps in there or underfill the joint at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this other side now. All right, so we finished up all the passes. And now we've just got to check and see if it's acceptable per the code standard, right? So how do we know? Well, we already talked about what the acceptance criteria is for the most part. Uh, no more than a 30 second undercut and no more than an eighth inch maximum. And, you know, then of course, no cracks, no overlap or anything like that, and no underfill in any amount, which means that it has to at least be flush with the surface in all areas. And, you know, so it can't be um, underneath the, the level of the base material anywhere. And for the overlap, that just means no cold lap, no areas where the weld is actually rolling over um, or anything like that. So, um, you know, this is an acceptable weld. I have to admit, though, I got lucky right in the center here. There's one area of my tie-in uh, between the start and stop where I'm right at an eighth of an inch. So that hits the eighth of an inch maximum. And if it was a little bit you know, more over that, technically that would be unacceptable. So I got lucky there. And as far as undercut, uh, I did a good job. I you know, really paused on all those edges and tied in everything. So I don't, there's maybe some areas where I have very tiny bits of undercut, um, but uh, nothing that would be unacceptable. And so, you know, you can use a variety of different types of gauges to measure that, um, to measure undercut and also, um, you know, the height. But um, this is a cam style gauge where it has this little finger that comes over. And then we, you know, we go to the highest area and then we tighten this down. And then we can look at our gauge and uh, make sure that it's not over an eighth of an inch. And then this also goes the opposite way, below zero, below the plane. And we could find any areas of undercut and stick this little finger down in there. And then same thing, lock it in and then take a look and see if we're over a 32nd of an inch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I got really lucky on that one area being an eighth of an inch maximum, but the rest of it's looking pretty good. So now we can cut this into our test strips, into our coupons, and then we can um, bend those and see if we pass the bend test.